Selecting the right suppliers for your cleaning business. Steve here with the Janitorial Store, the channel where we help cleaning business owners scale their cleaning businesses with systems, tools, and resources. Well, you know, um, working with the right supplier uh, really makes a, a difference in your business. And, you know, the thing is, is that if you own a cleaning company, you should be working with some, some local supplier. Uh, I'm going to say local, and I'll get into, into the, some of the other things later, but I say local, but it's very, very important. Now, I highly advise you to have at least two suppliers. Now, something you have to remember, okay, we started our cleaning company. It doesn't matter if it's a house cleaning company or a commercial cleaning company, you know. Um, either way, we have to have su supplies. We need to have chemicals. We need equipment. Um, and the best place to get that is from uh, your supplier. Now, you're all saying, well, Steve, you know, I buy my stuff online and, uh, you know, yada, yada, yada. Oh, great, you know. You can get your, your supplies online and your equipment online. But here's some things to think about when you're purchasing it online. Um, sometimes you're, you're not going to be able to find the chemical all the time. Uh, you know, maybe they're running a sale and they're, they're, uh, they uh, discontinue something or, or whatever. Um, that and you have to consider uh, your delivery charges when you're purchasing online. You have to remember that a gallon of product weighs 8 pounds. So, you know, that's the, the shipping cost, they're not just going to give that to you. Some will, some won't. You know, it all depends upon, you know, uh, what... what uh, uh, you know what strategy they're using, but the, that's one of the problems is that uh, you have shipping costs when you're doing online um, online purchasing. Uh, the other thing is that you really can't build a relationship with those people either. I, they're they're virtual. They're online. Um, you know, on some of those, there go ahead and try to, to try to contact them to talk to a physical a live person. Uh, is darn near impossible. So. You know, that's the whole thing about the online thing, uh, you know, when we're buying chemicals and, and let's say some hand hand tools or sponges or, you know, uh, uh, metalamine sponges and things like that there. Um, but now the real thing is that online, now you purchase equipment online. Let's say you decide to get into floor care. doesn't matter if you're doing residential cleaning or, or commercial cleaning, uh, you're going to start buying some equipment to do floor care. So we could be, you know, cleaning wood, we could be cleaning stone, ceramic tile. Uh, sheet vinyl, luxury vinyl, whatever. We need some equipment to do that. Well, we're going to go online. We're going to buy this equipment, and again, we got our shipping costs and this, that, and the other. Well, let's say you you bought the equipment three months later. There's an issue with it. So now, what do you do? Well, you bought it online. Well, I guess you're going to have to ship it back to that online person or back to their repair shop or whatever. Um, you know, do they have replacement equipment for you or, or, or you know, a user that you can use while your equipment's being being repaired? Well, in some cases, you may be sitting there for not three months without a piece of equipment because you bought it online and you have to send it to them and they're going to do their repair or whatever they're going to do, and then they'll eventually send it back to you. Um, so, you know, be careful when you're, when you're deciding to buy all your supplies online. Now, I would say yes buy some of your stuff online, you know, some, some of the smaller stuff, but when you're talking about equipment and some, some of your major, uh, your chemical lines, uh, paper and plastic and things like that, they're also your consumables, you should always be doing that locally. Now, the whole reason we're doing it locally is because we're going to be building a relationship with that supplier. Now, something I want to tell you is that many people don't know this about us, that we actually owned a janitorial supply company. We know how the game's played. Uh, we owned one for many, many years. We sold it uh, along with our cleaning company. Um, so we understand that. We know what it is to be a supplier and how, you know, and how the whole game works. So the thing is that, like I said, that you want to build a relationship with your local supplier. Now, the thing is, is when you decide to uh, visit their shops or their showrooms, you're going to see what kind of line of product that they have. Uh, you know, they'll have uh, multiple lines of product for chemicals, uh, they'll have different lines of equipment, and, you know, you just check it all out, you know, uh, ask for demos on, on uh, doing the, equ uh, the equipments, uh, you know, equ any equipment. Uh, for any chemicals, always ask for samples. If they don't give you any samples, 
go look somewhere else. You know, uh, they're, they're not set up to be a real true supplier, to really be a business partner with you. Um, you if you ask for samples, they should deliver some samples to you. Uh, we did that all the time, and there are lots of companies that do that, that just provide samples. So if, if I've got a class cleaner or an all-purpose cleaner that you're interested in, I will give you a sample of that, let you test it out, try it out, and chances are you're going to be back and you're going to buy a heck of a lot more from me. So make sure you always ask for samples. But, you know, it's important that on the product lines, uh, like I say, you've got chemical. And uh, any of you that are familiar with all of the, uh, the different types of uh, chemicals that you use for cleaning, uh, you know, we got our disinfectants, we got our, our, our solvents and, and uh, you know, um, degreasers and, uh, and um, other products like that there. There's typically about five or six that we're going to be using. Um, and uh, if you're not familiar with those, uh, the janitorial store actually has a training program on the chemistry of cleaning, which, which we go over all that stuff to really educate you on, on what's the difference of, uh, you know, the products that you're going to be using. But that's what you got to consider is when you're purchasing chemicals from a supplier. Now, like I say, they'll have different lines of products, and within that line they may have, you know, could be 12 products in one line. Uh, now, all those products aren't going to, you know, you're probably not going to like them all. Uh, but chances are you might like one or two. So that's why you always want to take a look at multiple lines of products. So in one line you might find a great all-purpose cleaner or a degreaser. You know, then in another line you might find a great uh, floor cleaner or a, a, or a glass cleaner. Um, so always take a look at that. Um, and, uh, you know, get the chemicals that, that you personally feel do the best, best job for you. Because that's what it ends up being. It ends up being a, per, a, a personal preference. You know, it, it's not that one product is really better than the other, for, for the most part. Um, it's just that, you know, the um, uh, most people have a personal preference of how, when they're working with something, how, how well it works for them. The same thing is true as when, we're start, when we start talking about equipment. You know, the, the vacuum cleaner discussion on Facebook and social media is just crazy. You know, which vacuum cleaner do you use? And if you do and look in some of these, uh, these uh, uh, discussions, you're going to see that it's a plethora of different uh, vacuums. It ends up being a personal preference again. So, you know, that's one of your decision-making, uh, that's your decision-making process is that you have to decide on which, what you feel is going to work the best. But you also have to think what's going to work best for your team. So, Keep that in mind. In mind. Uh, so we got chemicals, we got equipment. Now we also have uh, what we call consumable products. More and more people now are are getting smart and they're selling uh, restroom supplies such as toilet paper, hand towels, soaps, uh, and things like that. There back to their customers. So they're you're actually supplying that product and marketing. You know you're buying it from your supplier and then you're marketing it up a bit and selling it to your customer, your client. And so now that's the whole thing there too is that. These suppliers may have, may or may not handle handle paper and plastic and so on and so forth. You know, you got can liners, but that's why you want to have multiple suppliers. You know, at least at least two. Uh, you may have three sometimes, but because some of the, your suppliers will not handle or have, you know, some of these things. Some of them only uh, will provide chemicals and equipment. Not all of them do uh, do paper and consumables and things like that. But the whole thing that that's based off of uh, when you're talking about your, your consumables, your toilet paper and hand towels and stuff, it's all based off of volume. So when you come to me and you tell me that, well, how much can I get a case of toilet paper for? Well, first of all, I have to know what kind of toilet paper are you talking about? Uh, because there is a, a, a big list of different types of toilet paper. Are you talking about a standard sheet? Are you talking about a sh short sheet? Uh, do you want a jumbo roll? Uh, you know, what is it that you want? Uh, so when you come there to talk to the supplier, make sure that you have all your information that you need. So you can come to them and say, yeah, what, can you give me a price on a, on a standard sheet of toilet paper, uh, 96 in a case? They're, then they're going to know what you're talking about. So now they can quote you uh, on, on that product. And they may have uh, multiple products of that type of toilet paper. They could have a good, better, best. So, you know, always ask about that too. Uh, one thing I will advise you of is when you are comparing your consumable products uh, for a client, always know what type of product they've got in, in their, uh, in their uh, uh, office. So always look in the janitor's closet, 
see what kind of toilet paper, hand towels, soaps, and things like that that they have. In fact, to just take pictures of it. If the case is there, that's even better because now you've got the name of the manufacturer, case amounts, and, and so on and so forth. So always do that. Uh, because that way now you've got all the information that you need when you go to your supplier you can tell them I need this this and this and then they can quote you a price on a, on a product that's e equal to that so keep that in mind um, that, that's a great way it's a you know it's, it's easy money really because uh, as you continue to get more and more accounts you're going to be selling more and more paper and plastic meaning that your volume is going to increase which is going to make your supplier happy so the more chemicals and equipment and, and paper and plastic that you're buying, that, that's more sales for them, that's more volume. So that means I can start maybe giving you a discount based off of your volume of sales. So obviously when I get a person that's, that's just starting and they're only buying one or two cases, well their price is going to be here. Well if I got another company that's uh, you know, doing 50 cases a month, well you know, their price is down here. So that's very, very important and that's how that game is played. It's all based off of volume. Um, so again, you know, I want you to think, uh, make sure that you think about those delivery costs uh, because even your local supplier may have a delivery charge. Um, there are some now that uh, that will uh, deliver to your uh, to your account no no uh, no uh, no charge. And if you can do that, that's great. You know, and the thing to do is you get them to, to deliver right into the janitor's closet. Uh, in fact, when I was working with suppliers, that's exactly what I did, as I had them drop it right into my janitor's closet. So now then when my team got there to, to perform the cleaning, they uh, obviously checked it in as inventory and then put it on the shelves and in the locations where it needed to be. Um, so keep that in mind and then remer uh, remember we know we're talking about repairs. Uh, equipment repairs, when you're dealing with somebody that's locally, chances are that they've probably got a loaner machine for you, which is very important. So if you've got a slow speed machine or an auto scrubber or, or buffer or whatever the heck it is and it's, it's broke down because you, know, you bought it from them for whatever it broke down or got damaged somehow, well you can take it to them if you don't know how to repair it, take it to them and you know, their repair shop will repair it and chances are they probably have a loaner for you to loan it to you so you're not without a machine. Very, very important. That's a value, valuable uh, uh, point of that partnership. So. Um, Keep that in mind, and um, you know if you are ever if you are ever in doubt um, of any of this stuff, you know contact myhousecleaningbiz.com or the janitorialstore.com. You know we answer these questions every day with cleaning business owners all over the world. There, uh, you know if you're if you're just not sure about something, give us a call. You know we'll uh, we'll give you our honest opinion based off our our many years of experience. You know, and the, the team that we put together, uh, we have well over 100 years of experience uh, in the industry. Um, so, you know, we've been around the block a while. Uh, we've done many different things. So if you do, if you do have uh, somebody, uh, you know, or you're getting some information that you're eh, not quite sure of, give us a call. Uh, we'll, we'll give you our opinion on what we think uh, is possibly going on. The reason I'm saying this is because you have to remember, salespeople sell. That's all they do. Now, salespeople, uh, they're going to tell you a lot of things about whatever the product is, this, that, and the other, and maybe some of them, the, it could be the truth could be stretched a bit. Um, so, you know, be careful of that. You know, I know that firsthand. I remember when I first got started, I had a salesperson tell me this, that, and the other, and I thought, well, geez, I need that product. I didn't. Well. All they did, they made their sale, that, you know, because salespeople have a quota that they have to meet. Uh, and if they don't, they're in trouble with the sales manager and the owner and so on and so forth. But be careful of that because it's been my experience that uh, salespeople generally don't have the knowledge. They haven't spent the time out in the field. Uh, now, some companies are getting better at that. But for the most part, most of them, their salespeople will get the training from their manufacturing rep and they'll go back in the warehouse and they'll block off a 10 foot square area or something and this is how you run this piece of equipment or how this is how you do this that or the other you know that's the training they get uh, very few that I've talked to have actually been out in the field in a customer's location stripping and washing waxing a floor from start to finish cleaning carpets from start to finish you know so 
burnish a floor, you know, and all these things. So keep that in mind and ask that when you're when you're talking to your suppliers, if you're, when you're talking to that salesperson from that supply company. Ask them, when was the last time you were out in the field working with a client? Stripping a floor, washing windows, burnishing, you know, whatever. Because uh, that that has a lot to say about about the first of all the supplier and and how they're training their salespeople and and the knowledge of the salesperson. The last thing you want is just a person that just wants to sell product. There, there's no value in that. There's no value to you in that. So you know, in fact, you know, when we had our janitorial supply company, uh, my salespeople worked out in the field for an entire year before they were turned over to just do sales primarily. You know, I wanted them to be able to talk the talk and walk the walk. So when you come to them and ask them, well, you know, I'm having this problem with my floor, you know, and it's doing this, that, and the other, they can tell you what's happening. They can tell you exactly what's happening and what's causing it and how to fix it. So that's very, very, very important. You know, there's a lot of value there because, you know, that's the whole thing is that you're partnering up with this, this supplier to help you grow and scale your business. So keep that in mind. And, uh, you know, I just want to say that, uh, you know, those of you that aren't members of the janitorial store of my house cleaning biz, you know, we have a couple of different uh, membership programs. They're premium and pro. And uh, you can uh, get into an annual program or uh, a reoccurring program on either, either one of those memberships. And, um, you know, what you can do is just go to the homepage uh, of either the janitorialstore.com or myhousecleaningbiz.com. And on that top navigation, just look for what you get. Click on it. Uh, it's right on the home page, and you'll go to that page, that, you know, for what you get, and look look, in, look at what all you get for your membership. Watch the videos that we have there, and uh, then decide if, if it's uh, something that you like to do is to join, join our community. But uh, I think what you'll see is that you're going to get a lot of value from it. I know you will, in fact, because uh, thousands and thousands of uh, cleaning business owners all over the world have, and uh, we've helped... Uh, uh, many of them build multi-million dollar businesses. So hopefully you got some value from this video. And if you did, uh, feel free to make a comment or leave a like. And if you have not already, make sure that you uh, subscribe. And turn on that bell notification to get the latest updates on new videos to help you grow your cleaning business. So thanks for checking in today. And uh, remember, let's keep it clean out there.